Many Americans are familiar with the major battles of the Revolutionary War. The battles of Saratoga or Bunker Hill or Yorktown stand tall in our collective memory. But much of the fighting in much of the country often involved fighting between groups of less than 100 people. Today, we're going to shed some light on a very dark corner of the fighting that had happened in the Revolution. Let's talk about the fighting that didn't conform to standard tactics. When the American Revolution began, not everybody in the colonies supported the rebellion against the crown. Some people worried for their businesses or livelihoods as their neighbors seized control of the government. Others objected for ideological reasons, arguing that the king was legitimate authority. Some had been personally assaulted or financially harmed by the patriots in their new zeal for liberty, and some found the hostilities to be an opportunity to change their status in society. These men and women were loyalists. David Fanning had suffered personal financial losses, and as, a, as, li as his life trajectory took him into service with the Loyalists, he, served more, he lost more and more of his companions in the fighting. He'd been imprisoned several times, but in 1780, the Patriots were not doing well in the American South. Fanning lived in the Carolinas, and now free, he continued to gather Loyalists together. A band of local Patriot militia, though, discovered his whereabouts. In the following excerpt, he, he details his experiences in his own words. After a little while, nine of us had assembled at a friend's house when we were surrounded by a party of 11 rebels under the command of Captain John Hines. We perceived their approach and prepared for it to receive them. When they had got quite near to us, we run out of the doors of the house, fired upon them, and killed one of them, on which we took three of their horses and some fire lots. We then took to the woods and unfortunately had two of our little company taken, one of which the rebels shot in cold blood. The other they hanged on the spot where we had killed the man a few days before. Fighting like this occurred all over the colonies. A band of rebels or loyalists would hear about an assembly of the other side in a nearby house or tavern, gather a group to attack, and this would lead to small fights between as little as a couple of dozen men. In this type of warfare, ambushes and secrecy provided the best chance of success. Spies were everywhere, and they could be your friends or your neighbors. Fanny continued. We were exasperated at this, that we determined for to have satisfaction, and in a few days I collected seventeen men, well armed, and formed an ambuscade on Deep River at Cox's Mill, and sent out spies. In the course of two hours, one of my spies gave me information of a party of rebels plundering his house, which was about three miles off. I instantly marched to the place and discovered them in a field near the house. I attacked them immediately and kept up a smart fire for half an hour, during which time we killed their captain and one private on the spot, wounded three of them, and took two prisoners beside eight of their horses well appointed as several swords. The same day we pursued another party of rebels and came up with them. The morning following we attacked them smartly and killed four of them on the spot, wounded three dangerously, and took one prisoner with all of their horses and appointments. And about an hour after that, we took two men of the same party and killed one more of them. As the war went on, the British eventually started to lose in the South. Fanning continued his activities as long as he was able to, until he needed to escape to British lines before the withdrawal from Charleston. Once with the British, he was relocated to Nova Scotia after the war, where he lived the rest of his life. Other Loyalists fought for freedom of a different kind. In 1775, Lord Dunmore, the Virginia royal governor, put out Dunmore's proclamation offering freedom to any man who escaped slavery from a patriot and served him under arms. One man who took up this offer was not even from Virginia. His name was Titus. He was from New Jersey and escaped slavery, and despite Dunmore's failing in Virginia, Titus eventually ended up in the British-controlled city of New York. There, he formed a band of loyalist raiders of mixed origins who raided and disrupted patriot operations in northern New Jersey. He was quite successful and received the honorary title of colonel from the British, and so he went by the name. Colonel Ty. Joshua Huddy was a well-known patriot militia leader and privateer. Having been given a letter of mark to raid loyalist supporters in their shipping in the coastal regions of New Jersey, he had been the bane of many loyalists and was wanted by them badly. Colonel Ty had received word of where he was, and with a strong party of men went to capture him. 
A newspaper later ran an account of the fight. One of these attempts, and one which very nearly proved successful, was made about the 1st of September, 1780, by a body of refugees, black and white, including among the former the mulatto leader known as Colonel Ty. The party made an unexpected attack on Huddy's house, which was bravely defended by himself and a girl of about 20 years of age named Lucretia Emmons. The house had been a station for a detachment of the militia, and fortunately the guard had left there several muskets, which the girl now loaded as rapidly as possible and handed them to Huddy, who fired them successively from different windows, wounding several of the assailants and causing them to greatly overestimate the number of defenders. This caused them to shrink from further direct attack, and they set, then set fire to the house, which, of course, ended all hope of successful resistance on Huddy's part. And seeing the flames beginning to spread, he, to save his house, agreed to surrender on condition that they would extinguish the fire, which terms they accepted. Huddy was later able to escape when local militia who had heard the fighting came to his aid, and he slipped away in the chaos. Colonel Ty was wounded in the hand during the fight, and later died of what many believe was an infection related to the wound. Huddy had later captured, was later captured and executed by the Loyalists, leading to a severe diplomatic affair as the Americans threatened to start executing British and Loyalist prisoners in response. The French ultimately helped smooth everything over, though. This type of fighting occurred everywhere. If you currently live in the states that were part of the original colonies, you might be surprised to find examples of these small ambushes and raids that happened in your town or your own cities. Sometimes there are historic houses or local landmarks or even just small placards memorializing these locations, though for most, there probably isn't anything at all. Thanks for watching. I hope it gave you all something new to think about and consider when it comes to how the Revolutionary War played out. If you know of a small ambush or skirmish that occurred in your town or at a historic place near you, please comment and let us know. Uh, I'd really like to learn more about what you all know and, and what you all have seen or heard about in your own local areas, these kind of things. There's not like a lot of comprehensive books covering them all, so please let us know when you have something. Have a nice day.